गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल वेलकम श्री परण साह सो शी इज करेंटली सर्विंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग इन आई आई टी पटना सो हर करेंट रिसर्च इंटरेस्ट इंक्लूड्स मशीन लर्निंग डीप लर्निंग नेचुरल लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग मल्टी ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑप्टिमाइजेशन आई एम एंड बायोमेडिकल इन्फॉर्मेशन एक्सट्रैक्शन थैंक यू मैम फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग अवर इन्विटेशन एंड गिविंग द टॉक इन एप केयर आई ट्रिपल ई ए आई सिम्पोजियम थैंक यू मैम Okay, yeah. Mm, uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Many thanks, uh, Professor Sneyamshu, uh, for inviting me for this particular talk. Yeah. So today I will be talking about uh, my research areas. So in recent years, I was working on the multi-modal information processing. So and uh, its various applications in the natural language processing. So I will uh, discuss about how you know we are we have started with the deep learning techniques and nowadays as the large language models are there. So uh, how the you know that initially we were applying the deep learning techniques and uh, we have shifted our focus to LLMs. So that is the you know the title of my talk that uh, the chart in the new territory is the multimodal information processing in the NLP uh, through deep learning and the language modeling. So yeah, so already uh, there was a brief introduction. So currently I am serving as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Patna, uh, and this is my web page and all my publications are listed in in this web page. And you can always reach uh, to me at this uh, email address reporter dot shahagrid gmail dot com or reporter at the rate iitp dot ac dot in. And um, you know, as we are working on the in the field of natural language processing, so we are developing several tools and uh, data sets because in many cases in the Indian setting, the data sets are not available. The training data sets because we are working on the supervised models. and the training data sets are not available because we are uh, working on many novel uh, problem statements so uh, we are developing the training data sets and many such tools uh, many such resources are available in my website so this link is also available here so you can also visit my uh, this uh, resource page uh, to download those data sets uh so yeah so going uh, forward uh, uh, yeah so basically you know that uh, uh, so in an art cell uh, these are the research areas uh, that i am currently focusing on so mostly on the natural language processing so we are uh, uh, there are several uh, sub domains of natural language processing in which we are currently focusing on one is called the, the dialog systems you know that nowadays we are very much popular uh, we are on a day, day to day life we are using the alexa or the siri we are using uh, we are giving many instructions to alexa that play this particular song or give me the weather update or you know that uh, switch on the television switch on the ac so alexa became a part and parcel of our day to day life uh, activities so these are alexa or the siri are examples of the dialog systems but alexa and siri are some kind of question answering systems uh, but we are now interested in developing some more human uh, learning inspired uh, this kind of chatbots or the conversational agents uh, which have more human like intelligence for example with the help of accenture we are working in the domain of sales so where we are developing some sales agent which has which have uh, some persuasion and the negotiation capabilities so this sales agent can, can sell a particular product to a customer uh, but if suppose the product the user wants to buy a product and uh, the product is not available exactly that exact product is not available in the database then the uh, sales agent can try to uh, sell a uh, nearby product like a very similar product uh, you know by using the persuasion so uh, very similar to our normal sales uh, okay, seller uh, they this sales agent will try to do a persuasion and you know this persuasion is not stand alone there are different persuasion strategies depending on the user's personality like if we know that um, the person is going to purchase a product 
uh, for his uh, mother's birthday, then the persuasion strategy would be an emotional appeal. Or if we know that the person, uh, person is very, very, you know, logical in nature, uh, you know, and so there, there will be some credibility based appeal. Uh, or if we know that the person is, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, that they're very well, but he's a good photographer. So maybe we can use some personal based feature like the camera quality for the persuasion. So there are different persuasion strategies. So this persuasion strategy is decided based on the context of the dialogue. So that way it is a kind of dynamic dialogue system. So it, it's not a having a fixed dialogue persuasion strategy, but it's having a di dynamic dialogue persuasion strategy. Then uh, followed by persuasion, there is a negotiation. So obviously it's a, you know, that optimization problem that the agent tries to uh, maximize the, the profit, but uh, simultaneously uh, there should not be, you know, the, it, it cannot make the uh, customer unhappy about the situation. So that way negotiation is basically done. So the persuasion, negotiation, these we are trying to infuse into a sales agent. Uh, then in the field of healthcare, we are also developing some kind of, you know, that a virtual doctor. So this kind of virtual doctors are helping the doctors in symptom investigation. So in general, our doctors are, you know, overburdened. Uh, if you see the doctor to patient ratio, it's very alarming in India. So, you know, that uh, already doctors are overburdened. So, can we somehow help uh, develop some chatbot which can help in symptom investigation? So, these doctors will uh, simply, this virtual bot or the um, chatbot will simply ask about some symptoms related to a particular disease. And uh, then, accordingly, it will uh, prepare a report and that report will be given to the senior doctor and the senior doctor will finally verify the report and it will take the decision about the patient. So this way, this way in the healthcare sector also we are developing some kind of chatbot and not only that for the mental health patients also because mostly mental health we are ignoring but mental health is also very very important as like our physical health and um, for uh, the students community we need a kind of a friend or a shoulder to cry on if a, a kind of chatbot which can simply listen to the problem of the students and then can simply give a kind of motivational uh, responses. So we also develop some motivational chatbot. So these are some of the works that we have done in the field of conversational agent side. Then there, are, there is a, 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 a good set of works in the complaint mining. So uh, you know that it is a kind of a PhD thesis of one of my student. So like we, we complaint mining is very, very important because uh, nowadays we are purchasing most of the items online uh, from different e-commerce websites. And then we are writing reviews also online. And many of these reviews are complaining time. Like we are not happy with the product, so we are writing the complaint about the product. And these are also multimodal in nature. Multimodal means that when we are writing the complaint, we are also uploading the images of that particular product, the defected image of the particular product. So that way it is also a kind of multimodal, uh, multimodal complaint. So we collected those images and then, you know, that from those, in, from those uh, posts, from those reviews, we, de we developed a kind of a, you know, deep learning based tool, which can automatically detect whether a particular post contains a complaint or it is simply a kind of a review. It could be positive review or a neutral review. So this kind of complaint mining also, uh, complaint mining also we are developing. And not only this, this kind of binary classification. So if suppose a, a review is a complaint, so what are the uh, aspects like a, a product can have many aspects. Like when we are talking about a particular telephone, a phone has many aspects like the battery life or the camera quality or the screen size. Uh, so there are many aspects of a particular product. So the, maybe the customer is happy about some aspect, but unhappy about some other aspect. So in, uh, in which aspect the customer is complaining? So we worked on the aspect-based complaint mining. 
which is more fine-grained analysis of the complaint mining. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is basically called the aspect-based multimodal complaint mining. And, uh, and, uh, and not only this kind of classification algorithm, classification like whether a, for a particular aspect there is a complaint or non-complaint, we also identified the phrases uh, from the reviews which are responsible for saying that this is a complaint. Like, you know, it is a kind of explainable AI that the, our algorithm is not only giving the output, binary output, yes and no, uh, but it's also giving the phrases, those phrases are in the output, which are uh, saying that, yes, because of the presence of these phrases, we can say that the uh, this, um, this review is a complaint. So this complaint mining, we did a lot of work. We're also working on the hate speech detection, like we are collecting data from the social media or the Reddit and exit different social media platform. And then we are detecting whether the review contains a hate speech or it is a normal text. That too we have done in the only on the tweet or on the meme memes. So these are some of the important tasks that we are doing in, in, in IIT Patna. Now let me discuss about uh, why multimodality. Like as I mentioned that nowadays we are not only dealing with the text data, we are also dealing with the, uh, you know, the multimodal data. So it's a mixture of text plus image plus sometimes audio and video as well. So the concept uh, uh, is uh, basically based on our real life experience because in real life, uh, our decisions are always multimodal. Like whenever we are taking a decision about an object, we are relying on our multiple sensors. Like we are not only seeing the object, we are using our multiple sensors uh, to collect the information about the object. Like we are hearing the sound of the object, feeling the texture of the object, uh, smelling the odors of the object. Uh, we are using multiple sensors to collect the information about the object. And then we are taking a decision. So basically multimodal learning uh, consolidates heterogeneous data from various sensors and data points into a single model. Uh, so but the idea is that maybe one modality is not sufficient to represent all the information, like uh, some abstract concept like freedom or love or affection, you can better represent using text. But how a Keanu looks like, uh, it, it is very difficult to uh, describe using text. So, you know, text and image are sometimes complementary to each other. So some concepts can be better described using image, some concepts can be better described using the, the text. So that's why, you know, the text and images are complementary to each other and we can better utilize, we can better have some features from both the uh, modalities and then can fuse them together to, you know, that get a um, you know, kind of decision. So that is the basically the multimodality or multimodal information processing. So multimodal information processing is having many applications in natural language processing, like uh, starting with the emotional recognition. Like if you want to detect the emotion of a particular person, you know that initially it was only text-based, like what the user is saying based on the utterance, textual description of the utterance, people used to identify the emotion of the particular person. But you know that we have many other modalities, like we can also see the uh, person's facial expressions. We can also see the body movements or audio tones also we have. So these are giving some additional information or additional dimensions of the, uh, of the person. Like if the audio tone is uh, very low uh, and the facial from the facial expression also we can understand that the person is not uh, very much okay, then we can understand that it is a sad. So the audio tone or the facial expressions or the eye movements, these are giving us some additional information to better understand the emotional state of the speaker. So that is uh, people understood and that's why they are now doing working on the multimodal, you know, the emotional recognition systems. Similarly, you know, in the Twitter, data is always multimodal. Whenever we are uploading the post, uh, yeah, any question? Yes, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so uh, actually, just um, I'm curious. In your previous slide, you you yeah. said that uh, the multimodal. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you completely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, you said that there the uh, one kind of multimodal input would be even smell or uh, odors or taste from flavors. Yeah, yeah. So um, I am curious whether uh, if there is any work in that area. Uh, I mean. Basically, supplying inputs um, on smells, I mean, smells or, you know, taste flavors. Um, uh, did people work on that? Like, uh... oh, oh, no. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, no, actually, I have not seen any such work. Uh, but I was just trying to, you know, motivate you that uh, this is a kind of, you know, what we are usually doing. Like, uh, when we are taking a decision about the ob about a particular object. Uh, we are using our multiple sensors and the sensors are giving this kind of, you know, information. Uh, yes. yes. But, yeah, 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 I understand. But, but uh, I have uh, in the NLP, at least I have not seen like NLP. I have seen this uh, audio, video, text and the images and also sometimes of uh, some kind in some cases, EGG signals because for the depression analysis, I have seen some work where EGG signals uh, and, uh, you know, this kind of video audio expressions are used, but uh, not this mails and etc. that I have never encountered. Yes. So, so my question to you is that, um, I mean, um, are, uh, is there any device or any sensor which can basically act as nose or taste uh, thing um and uh, you know for example eeg mm -hmm. or ecgs can actually give some um uh, some analog or some digital yeah we data need to the measure heart. them yeah i understand we need to measure them and we need some data yes uh, so my my you know like uh, kind of uh, not a question but a kind of curiosity is that no did people build any sensor Okay, okay. No, I, I, I don't know. Like, I am not from the IoT background, but I have not seen any any such work in the NLP because in NLP, um, for the multimodal space, uh, the most common modalities are these uh, text, image, audios, videos. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are the most common modalities because these are very, uh, very much available. No, because we are mostly downloading data from the social media. And the social media is always full of audios, videos, uh, text, and the images, okay. uh, or maybe newspapers. In the newspapers, also uh, news reporters are uploading a, a clip, which is a kind of video or images or text. So that's why we are mostly dealing with the text, uh, image, and the videos. Yes, but uh, of course, it is very. I understand the question. I will look into this. Yeah, if, if, if there is any IoT device to capture this kind of data, but yeah, it's very relevant. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and and maybe one more related thing yeah. is that since you talked about newspaper articles yeah. and all, like um, earlier people actually were using this, uh, you know, uh, one this topic mining, which is uh, and a, and, uh -huh. a very, uh, and a very common uh, algorithm was basically you know late in the day in the LDA, LDA, yes, LDA, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So sort of delicious allocation. So uh, I'm curious now with the advent of this uh, uh, deep learning and also with uh, um, you know, Gen uh, uh, AI. LLMs. Uh, <laughs> is it still being used or is it now, um, I mean, um, kind of uh, went into a back burner? Uh, so, mostly, I think for the topic identification, people are using the LLMs only because you know that uh, it's very easy. They are, they are doing extremely well for identifying the topic. So, LDA uh, was previously used. But uh, not nowadays. I have like you know, uh, in then people switched to deep learning, and then now I think most people are using this, uh, you know, uh, uh, LLMs only. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are Thank traditional you. techniques. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so this is the the second is the second another example. Like you can see that we are collecting the Twitter data, and the Twitter data is again the full of images and the text, 
and uh, yeah and then we are uh, first of all like the, if there is a disaster situation so in the disaster situation people are uploading the current situation of the uh, uh, current the images of the current situation so uh, from those images we can classify yeah, the image basically for the, the post into relevant and non relevant because some uh, images, some posts are not relevant at all. So we can easily categorize the post into two categories relevant and non relevant. And then all the relevant posts can be further summarized. And this summary can be given to the rescue team. And the rescue team can basically plan for the rescue operation. So that is basically, yes, Ramesh. So this is uh, very much useful for the uh, for the disaster management. So where also we have applied the multimodal summarization. Yes, Ramesh, you had a question. Uh, I, I saw a hand raised. Okay, so uh, so as I mentioned, so in last, I think I, I should say last uh, um, like four to five years, we are now moving towards the multimodal information processing. So because as NLP researchers have also found out that it's not only text data that we have to handle, but we need to handle because our social media is now becoming the multimodal news, news reports are becoming multimodal. So we need to move towards the multimodality. So it's not only textual data, but it is you have to be, we have to handle text plus image. Uh, or text plus image plus audio plus video, this kind of data. And we have we have applied uh, them in various domains, like uh, as I mentioned, dialogue systems, complaint mining, hate speech, because memes are very popular. And whenever we are bullying someone or, um, you know, that oh, we are, we are sp spreading some hate speech, people are spreading some hate speech, it's true, and memes only. And, you know, memes are nothing but the combinations of images and text. And then some, some summarization, I will discuss in detail the summarization. The rumors are also spread through a combination of image plus text. And then there are some medical question summarization because uh, we are often, we are posting our, our queries, medical queries in the different blocks, medical blocks. Uh, where we also, we are uploading the symptoms of the conditions. Um, you know, uh, medical conditions in, in the image form. So, you know, we have a medical question and also we have some images uh, of the symptoms. So doctors do not have time to go through uh, such long questions. In order to answer those questions, they need a summary of those questions. So we are also working on this kind of medical questions, uh, question summarization. And uh, then uh, you, with the help of, of Sony Research India, we started working on the recommendation system. So recommendation systems, we all know it's a very, very useful task. And these OTT platforms are regularly using these recommendation systems. Uh, but mostly they are collaborative filtering uh, or the content-based recommendations. So we, you, you, in the content-based recommendations, so the in the mostly it was uh, you know that, that there was metadata like there was a genre of the movie or the cast of the movies or the director of the movies. So based on those, they used to calculate the similarities between two movies. Like if suppose I have seen a movie and now some new movies have to be recommended to me, they used to calculate the movie to movie similarity based on the genre or the cast or the director. These are the metadata features of the movie. So we uh, basically our hypothesis was that you should not only focus on the metadata of the movies, we should also see uh, some the trailers. So from the trailers of the movie also, we should identify some useful features and then the similarity should also be based on the trailers. Because in general, uh, the, uh, the, 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 if the uh, movies are from the same genre, they have some kind of ident identical, uh, you know, trailer, uh, like the sound uh, or the audio signals would be somehow similar, like romantic movies used to have a similar soundtrack in the trailers. Horror movies used to have similar soundtrack in the trailers. So, you know, we, we, we incorporated this concept that, and also, you know, the objects used in the trailers uh, should be also used for finding out the similarity between the movies. 
So we incorporated multimodality in the, in this sense that now we are not only considering the metadata features of the movies, but also using the trailers of the movies to find out the similarity between the two movies. Yeah, and then we used a you know the VLM and the LLM to uh, determine the uh, uh, you know the similarity and to detect uh, correctly detect the genre of the movie, and that paper just got accepted in dub dub dub. So yeah, so now let me, I uh, sorry, I am running out of time, but yeah, let me now discuss in detail one of my work, which is the summarization. Like, uh, you know, we are one of the past uh, researchers who introduced the concept of uh, multimodal summarization, uh, because that, that, that time no one was working on the multimodal summarization concept. People were simply exploring the uh, text summarization concept. So we were the first one, like in, it, it was in 2020, in, uh, we, we just started working in uh, multimodal summarization. So uh, you know that in summarization, summarization you know that it is a fundamental approach in natural language processing and we need to, that time LLM was not introduced. So people were mostly working on, uh, you know, uh, deep learning based approaches to get a uh, summary of a particular big document. So if you, have, if you have a long document and you do not have time to go through such a long document, so you really need to get a uh, gist of the document. So a concise summary of the document, and that is basically called the summarization. So summarization is of two types, extractive and the abstractive. So extractive means that um, you simply, uh, it is a subset problem. So you, if you have 1000 sentences, you simply select 10 sentences, 10 best representative sentences from the document. And these 10 best representative sentences will be the summary. This is the extractive summarization. And the abstractive summarization means that here it is a, we are rewriting, okay? So uh, like as a human being, first we have to understand the main content of the document, and then we need to rewrite the, uh, you know, the entire uh, content in, uh, in maybe 10 sentences. So natural language generation is also involved here. So it is more difficult. Uh, many applications of this like in emergency briefing uh, as i mentioned that some disaster has happened and many people and many people are um, now updating their social media sites uh, regarding the recent uh, you know incident what is the current situation uh, so you can, we can down, we can uh, extract all those information from the social media and then we can categorize the post into relevant and non relevant and then all the relevant posts can be uh, summarized together and th that can be given to the rescue team. So this is the emergency briefing. Then legal documentation in the legal domain, documents are very long. So it's very difficult to go through long documents. So we really need some, uh, you know, sh summary of those documents. In the educational content, in educational settings, teachers and students encounter vast amounts of information across various subjects and disciplines. Summarization tools can help educators create concise summary. So in educational domain also, it is very, very useful. So now, uh, you know, how uh, summarization has evolved. So initially, uh, researchers were working on the text summarization. It was maybe either from a single document, you have to generate a summary or from multiple documents, you can generate a summary. But then uh, researchers started working on the multimodal summarization that no, uh, we should not only focus on the text, we should rather also focus on the images or the videos. Suppose there is an event. So if for the event, you not only have the textual descriptions, but you also have some images of the event, but you also have some, maybe someone has also captured some videos of the event. So that way uh, you have uh, not only some images of the event, but also some videos of the event. And also uh, you have the, uh, you know, the textual description of the image of the, of the, of the event. So uh, that's why, you know, we should use the multimodal content to generate the summary. 
uh, then you know that uh, then people are nowadays working on the common based summarization like suppose there is a news uh, document and after reading the news document there are many readers who are also giving some kind of comment so maybe uh, they uh, they are um, reporter has made some mistake okay reporters when, when the reporter has written this news document uh, he or she has made some mistake so now the uh, reporter is now the new reader is making updating those uh, um, uh, um, uh, is giving some useful suggestion okay so these are the comments so if we can incorporate those comments in generating the summary so now this comments can be of three types either they are supplementary to the uh, you know the reports or those are complementary to the reports or those are kind of neutral to the reports so those are called the uh, comment based summarization then you know before generating the summarization we should verify whether the you know the document is rumor rumor or it is an authentic document or it is a fake document like uh, uh, suppose you are uh, working on the microblog summarization or the tweet summarization so there is a tweet we should not blindly generate a summary from the tweet we should first first verify that the tweet is a, a genuine tweet and then only we should generate a summary from that and now so working on uh, using the llms large language models because you know large language models are very good in generating the new text so why should we not use the large language models for generating the summary and then integration of multilingual capabilities because obviously our uh, llm this uh, summarization systems uh, should uh, you know that uh, should be able to handle uh, multiple languages embracing multilingual capabilities is crucial for inclusivity and accessibility in online communication so this is our uh, tivs task so we have a set of text documents a set of images and a set of videos and uh, we are combining all of them and then we are generating a text summary uh, a, a, a set of images are part of the image summary and a video is part of the video summary so in the input we have a set of text documents a set of images and also a set of videos and in the output we have a text summary we have a uh, set of images in the image summary and we also have a video summary so uh, here we have used this data set so this data set is uh, proposed in this paper so in nlp 2017 this data set was proposed multimodal summarization for asynchronous collection of text image audio and video so there are 25 topics each topic comprising of 20 text documents per topic uh, 3 to 9 images per topic 3 to 8 videos per topic uh, three text references per topic okay so this is the it's very small data set there are only 25 topics and for each topic we have 20 text documents uh, three to nine images uh, three to eight videos and for each topic there are three gold uh, summaries and three annotators um, basically uh, when this in this paper they only uh, propose that in the output there will be text summary the output is not multimodal in the input we have the text image and the videos but in the out um, output there is only text summary so we basically extended this data set and we made the data set multimodal so multimodal in the sense that in the now in the output also we have a image summary and also the text uh, video summary okay so now we employ three annotators and these annotators are basically annotating the data set and then uh, you know that they are uh, you know annotating they are uh, annotating they are selecting an image in the output and also they are selecting a video in the output so this way we are making this data set multimodal so initially already the text summary was in the output now the annotators are selecting um, uh, a image as the image summary some images for the image summary and also a video for the video summary 
So this is our first proposed framework, which we proposed in 2020 in European Conference and Information Retrieval, ECIR. So it was based on the integer linear programming. So we assume that uh, what we did uh, from the text, we collected all the sentences. And uh, from the videos, we separated uh, video into two parts, audio and the key frames. So that from the audio, we generated the transcript. We used the whois part to generate the transcript. And then uh, those uh, transcripts are also added to the text, uh, text set. And the key frames are added to the image set. So now we have two inputs, text set and the image set. So for each sentence, there is a variable. For each image, there is a variable. Because in the integer linear programming, we have to generate the framework. So there are, if there are n number of sentence, there are n number of, uh, say, you know, sentence variables. If there are m number of images, there are m number of image, image variables. Now, you know that, um, yeah, yeah, Bhaskar. Bhaskar? I cannot hear you, Bhaskar. Uh, yeah. Bhaskar, you can unmute. So, um, yeah, so basically we, we used uh, variables to represent the sentences and to represent the images. And then we, uh, we denoted some uh, matrices, okay? So we assume that there are k number of Cluster. So basically, by integer linear programming, we are determining the we are dividing this n number of sentences. We are di basically distributing this n number of sentences into k number of clusters. So we assume that there are k number of clusters. So this you know this basically kind of you know assignment matrix we are deciding by the integer linear programming. So we have a n cross k matrix. And similarly, we have a PAP cross N, uh, you know, PAP cross a K, K matrix. And these matrices are determined by the integer linear programming. And there are many uh, objective functions like the compactness of the clusters and the similarity between the image cluster and the image center to the cluster center. Uh, so those objective oh, functions, okay. basically, we have tried to maximize by the integer linear programming. So the Gurubi optimizer is used to optimize the this particular framework, and we put some constraints that there should always be k number of clusters in the text side and also in the image side. That way, we have solved the integer linear programming. Finally, we are getting the text summary and also the top k images in the image summary. And by post-processing, we are adding some non-key uh, frames in the uh, image summary. And for the video summary, uh, what we have done is that from all the videos, we have calculated their similarity with respect to uh, this text summary generated and with respect to all the image summary generated. And the video which is having the highest similarity with respect to the text summary and the video summary is selected as the uh, mobile, as the, you know, the video summary. So this is the integer linear programming based approach. Next, we move to a multi-object optimization based approach. So because here, these are all unsupervised based approaches where we are first applying the clustering on the sentences and the clustering on the images. Okay, by uh, these are all unsupervised based approaches because the data set size is very small, only 25 topics are there. So the, which is not sufficient to apply any deep learning based approaches. So that's why we are applying some clustering based approaches. So you know that here we have used a multi object optimization based approaches. So you know that a genetic algorithm based uh, approaches we have used. And again, that there are multiple objective functions, the compactness of the, um, you know, of the clusters, text clusters, the compactness of the image clusters, and also the similarity between the text center and the image center. So this way, we are maximizing uh, all, all of them, and uh, they, and basically we are getting multiple clusters, and uh, you know that we are getting multiple such uh, multiple such summaries, and uh, so now because it is a paratactomal set, so we are getting multiple such summaries, and then depending on the need, we are selecting one of them. 
So these are the results. So basically we are calculating, we are reporting the best result that we received uh, from this clustering based approach. And uh, we have compared with many existing approaches. So rules measure is used to compare the um, clustering results and the yeah, image precision is used to compare the yeah, precision of the image uh, summary. So next we also introduce the concept of, you know, that always we should not use the image which is similar to the text because image can be uh, either very similar to text or image could be supplementary to the text also. So basically we introduce the concept of complementary visual enhancement or the supplementary visual enhancement. So you know that there are two uh, helper functions, quality estimator function and the diversity estimator function. So the quality estimator ex estimator function is that, you know that we are checking whether a particular modality is really going to help or not. Like, see, we cannot simply introduce a, um, a modality. If the modality will not give a sufficient amount of information, then the modality is not going to be added. So that is checked by the quality estimator function. And there is a diversity estimator function, which checks the whether the, uh, you know, that by including that particular modality, we are introducing some diversity or not. So, you know, that um, we are, you know, basically, then the modality will be considered as the supplementary if the diversity with respect to the central modality. So here, the central modality is the textual modality. So because our main, uh, the main central modality is the textual modality. So the diversity with respect to the textual modality is less than some threshold. Then you consider that modality uh, C as the supplementary modality. And if the, um, the diversity with respect to the textual modality is greater than some threshold, then we consider the uh, modality C as the complementary modality. So this way we are categorizing the um, the, 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 the C modality as the supplementary or the complementary. So for example, here you can see that if this is your textual modality, the Russian air, airliner which crashed in the Sinai airport desert, killing 224 people was downed by bomb analysis of the black box recorders uh, indicates the plane had been carrying 217 passengers, including 17 children and seven crew members. Families of the passengers have gathered at St. Petersburg airport uh, as bodies begin to arrive back in Russia. If this is your text summary, you can see that um, uh, here this is a supplementary because whatever is written in the text, that is also shown in the image. So it is a supplementary enhancement. But here, this is the complementary because here, uh, the relatives of the victims created the memorial at the St. Petersburg airport. So this part is not written in the text. So this is an additional summary, which is part of the, uh, which is uh, not written in the text. This is the complementary enhancement. The next we worked on this, uh, on the supplementary complementary based multimodal summarization. So here again, the pre-processing step remains same. We are generating the, you know, the, um, uh, uh, from the whisper, we are generating the uh, transcripts. Transcripts are added to the text set and the key frames are added to the image set. And then we are projecting them in the same uh, vector space. And finally, we are applying the uh, past, we are applying the, the multiplicity based clustering on the text data. We are not considering the image data at first. We are simply applying the sentence clustering in a multi way. Uh, and then uh, we are ne next we are categorizing the, you know, the images um, uh, to the, uh, you know, we are categorizing the images to supplementary type or the complementary type based on their distance from the uh, text cluster center. So if the image is very, very similar to the text cluster center, then the image is called the supplementary type. And if the image is far away from the text cluster center, then this is called the complementary type. So this way we are categorizing the images. And then we also applied the, the clustering on the image site. And finally, we, you know, we added some images, uh, you know, 
in in each cluster in the in each text cluster we added some images which is a combination of some uh, supplementary and the complementary so there is a parameter which determines that how much supplementary and how much complementary images you want to add so if you want to put more focus on the supplementary more supplementary images will be added you want to put more focus on the complementary more complementary images will be added and then finally there is a post processing where we are also adding the videos on each summary because this is a multi character tumor set so finally one video is also added on each summary so this is all um, so initially we are, as i mentioned that as the data set was very small it, there are only 25 topics so we are working on this kind of unsupervised approaches mostly initially started with the in, indigenous linear pro, uh, programming uh, and, but then uh, we we worked on the multi ability optimization based approaches uh, so then we realized that uh, there is no data set in the indian context for multimodal uh, summarization okay so we created such a data set in the in the last year only in esl 2023 so we basically created a large scale okay yeah time exceeding yes yes and this will be my last one so we will create a large scale multilingual multimodal summarization data set uh, where there are 1.1 million in million instances spanning 20 languages english chinese spanish russian french ukrainian portuguese japan and also some indian languages like Tamil, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, Sinhala, Urdu, Pasto, and all these languages. So what we did is that we basically collected this data from the CNN. Okay, so you know that uh, from the uh, explore the news domain and analyze the structure of the articles. And after serving multiple news providers, we finalized on BBC News. So from the BBC News, you can see that this is a text, and initially the reporter is already writing a summary of the uh, of the of the document. So this summary we are considering as the now uh, in, in this summary only we are considering as the goal summary. So yeah, so basically we art, we obtained the articles and then uh, we uh, selected that particular summary as the goal summary, and uh, yeah, you know that uh, we this in each news article contains a text document images with corresponding captions the keywords and links to related news articles and also the multimodal summary so uh, we also the um, like applied some existing multi uh, uh, multimodal summarization techniques uh, you know that uh, just to showcase the uh, performance on this particular data set because this data set this paper is on the mostly on the data set paper and uh, these are the results on the English data set where we perform some multimodal summarization as well. So next, uh, we are also working on the common based summarization as I mentioned that sometimes what may what can happen is that maybe the reporter is reporting some event, but then the uh, there, are, there are many readers who are reading the document and they are correcting the reporter. Okay, so like here you can see that the, 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 suppose this is a kind of a report uh, document and the human writer has written something wrong like this is not a, a cruise ship this is a oceanographic research vessel okay so this was the original document and then there is a reader who has corrected this so then maybe this correct this reader's comment can be incorporated in the in generating the summary okay so this is called the reader hour summarization so this data set was available reader hour multi document summarization but again this data set was textual data set this was not multimodal data set so we basically made this multimodal so we we selected all the events and then we crawled some images from the, from the google uh, and the google images and we manually manually annotated the uh, data the, the, the each event with some images these are the statistics that for each topic there are minimum two images a maximum 69 images median is basically nine and uh, yeah I like this uh, here this is an example of the you know the australian fire 
Okay, Australian braces for most of the wildfires. These are the corresponding four images that you can see. And then we develop some multimodal approach, which is the comment aware summarization. Now in the input, we are considering the comments and the articles and also the images. And then we are developing a summary, which is the comment aware summarization. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think, uh, and these are some of the results. You can see that this is the original summary and the images. And our model is also going to predict at least uh, some, some of the correct images and a few of the uh, extra images it has, add, it has added. Yeah, so um, uh, yeah, I think uh, I need to stop. So basically now we are also using the LLMs for solving the same problem. Uh, so this is our architecture that now initially there is a classifier. So this classifier is categorizing the comments into three categories. A user's comments can be either supplementary to the um, news document or like it is maybe giving some information which is supplementary to the news document or it could be complementary or it could be neutral. So then we are adding these comments to the uh, your original document and then giving to the LLMs to generate the summary. So the or final summary is now generated by LLM, not by deep learning based approach. So for the classification, we are using a BART based classifier or in another alternative method, GPT 3.5 is also used for classification. And then finally, the summary is generated by the LLM. So these are the results that you shows that LLM is doing almost fine compared to all the approaches. Yeah, so I think uh, let me stop now. I think uh, there are some questions also. So yeah, so any weightage assigned to multimodal uh, mean multiple sources of data? Uh, yeah, Bhaskar, so a very good question. So uh, uh, see, uh, we have not uh, given any such weightage but uh, there is a concept called the attention okay so we are put we are in many of the cases we are doing a intermodal uh, attention so where based on the image uh, we are putting weightage to a part of the text so or we are uh, doing uh, a attention to the image based on the text so like there is a intermodal attention which is putting weightage uh, on a part of the text based on the image or putting uh, weightage on the image based on the text. So that attention we are using, but otherwise, uh, like when we are uh, uh, fusing the vectors, we have not given any weightage. Idea. Thanks for the talk. For this pursuiting dialogue system, what are the strategies employed to learn the system on the multi ten pursuiting data? Was the data created from scratch uh, with manual effort? Yes, yes. We created the data uh, like in two different ways. Initially, we are working in a manual setup like there are annotators and by rule leveling, like there are two annotators and uh, there are rule leveling like what annotator is uh, behaving like a seller, the another one was behaving like a buyer, and then by doing this kind of role labeling, uh, they were uh, creating the data set. Now we are doing the same setup with the LLMs. You know the LLM agents, so we are using two GPT 3.5s, and we are assuming that one GPT 3.5 is a seller, the other is a buyer, and they are completely com 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 they are interacting to each other, and as an interaction, they are generating the data. Yes, yeah, so they are we are we are doing in both we are basically manually creating the data set and we are selecting different types of scenarios like initially when you are starting the conversation we are selecting different scenarios in one scenario the customer is saying that i want to buy the product buy a product for my mother's birthday in some situation the customer is saying explicitly that no i believe in rating i believe in rating on the product I do not believe in the other, uh, you know, advertisements. Like this, we are we are trying to make the data set diverse so that all the situations are covered. So it's a big, big effort in creating a data set.
Priya, is it, uh, are you getting it? Yeah, any other question? So I uh, request all of you to visit my web page so because many of the data sets are available in my web page. And uh, yeah, and almost all the publications are also available in my web page. Any other questions in the question? Syllabus? Ha, ma'am. I, I don't think there is any other questions. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, thanks for accepting our invitation once again. Uh, it was a great talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, thanks all the attendees yeah. for attending my talk. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye.